Dishonored. Dishonored is one of those games that grabs you right out of the gate. The world, the story, the powers it all clicks almost immediately, and before you know it, you're deep in the grimy streets of Dunwall plotting your next move. You play as Corvo Atano, a bodyguard framed for the murder of the Empress, and from the first few minutes, the game throws you into a tense world of betrayal, revenge, and political intrigue. What really hooks you is the freedom it gives. After the intro, it's like, here's the mission, now figure it out, and that's where the obsession starts. Do you sneak through a guard's window, choke out every enemy, and leave without a trace? Or do you go in loud, summoning rats and blasting everyone in your way? The game doesn't judge it lets you approach missions however you want and experimenting with different playstyles is half the fun. The powers are where Dishonored really shines. Blink is probably the coolest ability right off the bat, it's this short range teleport that lets you zip around rooftops through windows or pass guards in an instant. Once you get the hang of it, it feels like you're gliding through the game, but there's more you can summon swarms of rats, possess people and animals, or even stop time entirely. And the best part, you can combine these abilities in creative ways to make every encounter feel unique. Then there's the world. Dunwall is dark, oppressive, and fascinating. It's got this Victorian steampunk vibe with towering buildings, plague-ridden streets, and hidden secrets everywhere. You'll find yourself going off the beaten path just to explore and see what you can uncover. The game rewards curiosity whether it's a hidden rune to upgrade your abilities or a side story tucked away in a journal entry. The story pulls you in too, it's not just about getting revenge, it's about choices. Do you spare your enemies or take them out? Every decision has consequences not just for you but for the world around you. The more chaos you cause, the darker the world becomes, and it all builds toward different endings based on how you play. Near Automata Near Automata doesn't waste any time pulling you in it, grabs you with its unique mix of gameplay and storytelling, and before you realize it, you're completely hooked. At first, it feels like you're just in for a stylish action game, but it quickly reveals there's so much more going on. You play as 2B, a stoic android sent to Earth to fight against alien machines, but within the first hour, it's clear this isn't your typical sci-fi story. What gets you obsessed early on is the way the game constantly shifts genres. One moment you're hacking and slashing enemies in fast-paced combat, and the next the game turns into a top-down shooter or side-scroller, it keeps things fresh and makes every section feel exciting like you never know what's coming next. But it's not just about variety, it's how seamlessly everything flows together. Whether you're in a massive boss fight or just gliding across the ruins of Earth, it all feels natural. The combat, powered by Platinum Games, is smooth as hell. You're dodging, slashing, and unleashing powerful combos with the help of your little floating pod companion. The learning curve feels just right you start with basic attacks, but as you unlock more weapons and abilities, the combat opens up in crazy ways, and it's not just about raw power, there's a rhythm to the fights that makes every encounter feel like a dance. Once it clicks, it's incredibly addictive. What really sets Nier Automata apart though is the way it tells its story. You're given just enough in that first hour to intrigue you who are these androids. What's up with these weird machines? Why does everything feel off? But it holds back just enough that you have to keep playing to get the answers, and trust me, the story only gets deeper and more emotional the further you go. Then, there's the world itself hauntingly beautiful in its emptiness. You'll explore decaying cities overtaken by nature, abandoned amusement parks, and eerie forests all while trying to figure out what happened to humanity. It feels lonely but peaceful, and the soundtrack, holy hell it's breathtaking. The music is woven into every moment, shifting dynamically to match the mood, making exploration feel both meditative and emotional. Within that first hour, Nier Automata gets its hooks in by making you feel like you're part of something much bigger. It doesn't bombard you with exposition, it lets the mysteries unfold slowly, pushing you forward with curiosity and emotional weight. And as you soon discover, finishing the game once isn't really the end and it's just the beginning of something much bigger. This is the kind of game that stays in your head, making you think about its themes, purpose, identity, and what it means to be alive long after you put the controller down, and once you're hooked, good luck putting it down. Near Automata isn't just a game, it's an experience that sticks with you.
your soul. Yours. Natalis Principle. The Talos Principle is one of those games that sneaks up on you. You start it thinking, okay, cool, a puzzle game with robots, and before you know it, you're deep into philosophical questions about consciousness, existence, and what it means to be human. It hooks you within the first hour, not just with clever puzzles, but with a sense that there's something bigger going on beneath the surface. At first, it's simple you're placed in these serene, open environments, ancient ruins, lush forests, and deserted temples tasked with solving puzzles using tools like lasers, connectors and pressure plates. The puzzles start easy enough to get you comfortable, but before long, the game challenges you to think in new ways. Each solution feels satisfying, and figuring out the trick to a particularly tricky one will have you grinning like a fool. It's a game that makes you feel smart, without being too punishing. But what really makes the Talos Principle special is the atmosphere. While you're solving puzzles, this voice Elohim guides you, presenting himself as your creator. At first it's soothing, almost like a mentor, but the more you play, the more questions creep in. Why are you solving these puzzles? What are you? Why does this idyllic world feel off? And that's when the game starts messing with your head in the best way possible. Our mythologies are full of the puzzles are great, but it's this blend of gameplay and philosophy that grabs you. Every time you unlock a new area or solve a puzzle, you feel like you're peeling back another layer of the world's mystery. It's not just about getting to the end, it's about figuring out what the hell is really going on and what role you play in it. The beauty of the Talos Principle is that it doesn't rush you. It lets you explore, think, and piece things together at your own pace. Before you know it, you'll be obsessed not just with solving the puzzles, but with uncovering the truth of the world. And when the game finally pulls back the curtain and hits you with the big questions, you'll be thinking about it long after the credits roll. If you're into games that challenge both your brain and your worldview, the Talos Principle will get under your skin in the best way possible. It's not just a puzzle game, it's a journey through ideas, and once it grabs you, it won't let go. The Evil Within 2 the Evil Within 2 pulls you in right from the start, and before you know it, you're way too deep to back out. It's a survival horror game, but it's not just about creepy monsters or jump scares, it's about making you feel like you're always on edge, like things could fall apart at any second. You play as Sebastian Castellanos, a detective who's seen some seriously messed up stuff. This time, he's on a mission to rescue his daughter, who's trapped inside a simulated nightmare world called STEM, and yeah, it gets weird fast. What makes The Evil Within 2 so addictive is the balance between freedom and fear. Unlike the first game, which was pretty linear, this one opens things up, it's not a full-on open world, but the sandbox-like areas give you a lot more room to explore. You can sneak through abandoned neighborhoods, scavenge supplies, or stumble into side quests that make the world feel more alive. But here's the catch, you never feel safe. Even when you're just walking down a street, there's this constant tension that something awful could jump out at you. The combat feels tight, limited ammo, enemies that can overwhelm you if you're not careful and every shot feeling like it counts. But it's not just about blasting your way through everything. A lot of the time, sneaking around and picking off enemies one by one feels like the smarter play. You can set traps, use distractions, or just try to avoid fights altogether. And when things do go sideways, the game keeps you on your toes. You'll end up in those moments where you're sprinting through alleyways, desperately hoping you've got enough stamina to outrun whatever's chasing you. What really makes this game work is the personal story underneath all the horror. Sebastian isn't just dealing with monsters, he's wrestling with guilt, loss, and trauma. And the whole journey is about him trying to piece himself back together while searching for his daughter. It's more emotional than you'd expect, and there are moments where the game genuinely hits you in the feels right when you're least expecting it. And man, the monsters in this game are nightmare fuel, they're not just creepy, they're unsettling in a way that sticks with you. You've got twisted humanoid creatures, bizarre abominations, and boss fights that feel like they've been pulled straight out of your worst dreams. Every encounter feels unique, and the designs are weird enough to make you stop and think, what the hell am I even looking at? The pacing is on point too. The game knows when to crank up the tension with a big encounter and when to slow things down, giving you time to explore, gather resources, and catch your breath just before throwing you back into the madness. It's a perfect blend of action horror and exploration, and it keeps you glued to the screen the whole time.
Outer Wilds. Outer Wilds is one of those games that feels like magic the moment you step into it. It doesn't hold your hand or bombard you with objectives, it just says, here's a spaceship, go explore and that's all it takes to suck you in. You play as an astronaut from a small alien race setting out to explore your solar system, but pretty soon you realize there's way more going on than you expected. There's mystery, there's awe, and without giving too much away there's a time loop. Yeah, things get wild. The obsession kicks in fast because the game taps into that pure curiosity. You hop into your rickety little spaceship, pick a planet, and just go. Every location feels handcrafted and every place you land has something strange or beautiful waiting for you whether it's a massive storm, ancient ruins, or a planet that's slowly falling apart in real time. And the best part, you never know what you're going to find. That sense of discovery is so addictive, and the game doesn't tell you where to go or what to do, you figure it all out on your own. The time loop mechanic is genius. Every 22 minutes the sun goes supernova and everything resets. At first it feels like a gimmick like, oh cool, a groundhog day thing, but as you explore, you realize that each loop is part of the puzzle. Every piece of knowledge you gain, like how to open a certain door or avoid a deadly hazard sticks with you, and you start connecting the dots across planets, piecing together this massive cosmic mystery. It's not about grinding stats or gear, it's about understanding, and when things finally start to click, it's one of the most satisfying feelings in gaming. The coolest part of Outer Wilds is how it's not about winning, it's about learning. The entire solar system is like one big interconnected puzzle and every discovery opens up new questions. Every loop is a chance to learn a little more, to get a little closer to the truth and the mystery at the heart of the game is so compelling that you have to see it through. The Outer Worlds. Alright, here we go. Now these both games are very similar, so I would like to mention Outer Worlds too. Let's see, the Outer Worlds pulls you in fast, especially if you love the idea of exploring space as a sarcastic, morally questionable protagonist. It's like someone took the best parts of Fallout and Mass Effect, sprinkled in some dark humor and said, go wild you wake up from cryosleep to find yourself stuck in a corporate controlled galaxy where everything from healthcare to space travel is run by greedy companies. What you do next, that's entirely up to you. Right from the first hour, you realize this game is all about choices, big ones, small ones, weird ones. It doesn't care if you want to be a hero, a chaotic jerk, or just someone trying to get by. You can talk your way out of most situations, shoot your way through them, or even lie and manipulate your way to success. And every decision has consequences that feel meaningful. Side with the corporation and the people might hate you. Help a struggling colony and the corporations might send assassins after you. It makes every dialogue choice feel weighty and you'll quickly get obsessed with seeing how things play out. The world building is another hook. Each planet and space station feels distinct, filled with quirky characters and little stories that flesh out the galaxy's corporate dystopia. You'll run into people complaining about the absurd rules of their employers, like getting fined for dying on the job, or NPCs that are so deep into company propaganda they think vacation is a myth. It's hilarious, but also unsettling like the satire hits a little too close to home. And let's talk about the companions, the game nails that aspect. Every character you recruit has their own backstory, opinions, and loyalty quests. They feel like actual people with thoughts and quirks, not just walking weapons. Parvati, for example, is a shy engineer with one of the most wholesome personal storylines you'll find in any RPG. The way they interact with you and with each other makes you actually care about who's in your party and it's fun to see them react to the choices you make. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers and I can keep your ship singing. Combat is solid and flexible. You've got a mix of guns, melee weapons, and special abilities with enough variety to keep things interesting. Plus, the TTD tactical time dilation system lets you slow down time and target specific enemy parts for critical effects shooting someone's leg to make them stumble or blasting their weapon right out of their hand. You can build your character however you want, whether you focus on sneaky critical hits, persuasive dialogue, or just pure firepower. What really makes the Outer Worlds stand out is that it responds 
respects your time. It's not this endless grind with a massive open world each location is dense with things to do, but it never feels bloated. The pacing is tight, the quests are meaningful, and it knows when to wrap things up. If you're someone who loves RPGs that let you shape the story and character in wild ways, The Outer Worlds is an easy obsession. One minute you're debating morality with your crew, the next you're blasting through bandits on a lawless asteroid and the choices you make along the way. They'll keep you thinking long after you put the controller down. Yakuza Like a Dragon Yakuza Like a Dragon is wild in the best way possible. It throws you into the streets of Yokohama with an over-the-top story, hilarious side quests, and a cast of characters you can't help but love. This isn't your typical Yakuza beat em up, this time it's a full-on turn-based RPG, but somehow it works perfectly. The first hour might feel like you're stepping into something weird and unfamiliar, but trust me by the time it clicks, you won't want to put it down. The game kicks off with Ichiban Kasuga, a low-level Yakuza who's more heart than brains. After spending 18 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit, he's expecting a hero's welcome but instead, his life falls apart, and he ends up homeless. What's great about Ichiban is that he's not your typical cool protagonist, he's goofy, optimistic, and kind of clueless, but his loyalty and big heart make him so easy to root for. He's like a chaotic mix of Goku and a clueless best friend who somehow always makes things fun. Combat is a blast. Instead of the series' usual brawler style, like a dragon switches things up with turn-based battles complete with hilarious RPG-style jobs, you can turn your characters into chefs who attack enemies with frying pans or musicians who heal the party by playing tunes. The game leans hard into the absurd, but it also respects the mechanics, there's strategy involved in buffing, debuffing, and juggling status effects. It's goofy, but it's good. And the best part? Pulling off special attacks, called Essence of Moves, never gets old, they're ridiculous over the top, and straight up hilarious. And Yokohama. Man, it's packed with things to do. One moment you're helping a crawfish reunite with its owner, and the next you're running a full-on business empire to earn enough money to fund your quest. There's kart racing, gambling, arcade games, karaoke seriously, the game is like one giant playground. And the side quests? pure gold. They're equal parts heartwarming and ridiculous, and they add so much character to the world. You'll meet people you'll never forget like a guy who needs help feeding hungry cats or a mascot character with, let's say, some anger issues. The party system is another highlight. Ichiban isn't rolling solo, he picks up a ragtag group along the way, including a former cop, a homeless man with weird abilities, and a bar hostess with a mean punch. The chemistry between these characters is incredible. They're not just party members they feel like real friends, the banter during fights and downtime adds so much personality, and their personal stories are just as engaging as the main plot. Bori and the Blind Forest Bori and the Blind Forest isn't just a game, it's an emotional journey wrapped in some of the most beautiful art and music you'll ever experience. From the moment you dive into it, the world pulls you in with its stunning visuals, heartfelt story, and tight platforming that'll have you hooked within the first hour. But fair warning this one hits hard. It's one of those games that makes you feel something deep before you've even gotten used to the controls. You play as Ori, a little guardian spirit, in a forest that's been devastated by a terrible storm. The whole game is about restoring life to the forest, but it's not just about running through beautiful scenery, it's about overcoming obstacles, making tough jumps, and figuring out how to move forward when everything seems stacked against you. The platforming is tight and responsive, which makes every leap and wall climb feel like a small victory. And when you finally pull off that perfect sequence of moves, it feels amazing. But it's not just the mechanics that keep you hooked, it's the feels. Right off the bat, Ori and the Blind Forest hits you with an emotional gut punch that sets the tone for the rest of the game. There's very little dialogue, but the story is told through beautiful animations and music that somehow manage to say more than words ever could. You'll find yourself emotionally invested in Ori's journey, rooting for this little spirit to save the forest, even when the odds seem impossible. 
the visuals are on another level. Every inch of the game looks like a painting in motion with glowing forests, misty swamps, and eerie caverns that feel alive. Each new area feels distinct and handcrafted, inviting you to explore every corner. And exploration is a huge part of the game. There are secret areas, upgrades, and collectibles tucked away in every nook and cranny. The more you explore, the stronger Ori becomes, which makes revisiting old areas with new abilities super satisfying. The game isn't easy though. The platforming challenges ramp up fast, and there are sections where you'll be retrying a lot, especially during escape sequences that demand quick reflexes and perfect timing. But here's the thing, it never feels frustrating. Every death is a lesson, and when you finally nail that tricky jump or outrun that rising water, it feels like a genuine achievement. The game respects your time, making every challenge rewarding without dragging things out. Deus Ex Human Revolution Deus Ex Human Revolution hooks you almost immediately with its slick, futuristic vibe and the feeling that every decision you make matters. It's part RPG, part first person shooter, and part immersive sim and the way it blends all that together makes it hard to put down once you start. You play as Adam Jensen, a former cop turned security specialist who gets augmented with cybernetic implants after a brutal attack leaves him barely alive. From that moment, you're thrown into a world full of conspiracies, shady corporations, and questions about what it means to be human. What gets you obsessed fast is the sheer freedom the game gives you. Every mission feels like a puzzle with multiple solutions and how you approach it is entirely up to you. You can hack your way through locked doors, crawl through vents, talk your way past guards, or just go in guns blazing. The game doesn't force you down any particular path, whether you play it stealthy or loud, everything feels viable, and it's super satisfying to figure out the approach that works best for you. The augmentations are a game changer, literally. As you level up, you unlock all kinds of abilities like cloaking enhanced hacking and strength upgrades that let you punch through walls. But you can't unlock everything, so you have to build Jensen in a way that matches your playstyle. Will you be a master hacker, slipping through systems and avoiding fights, or do you want to upgrade your combat skills and take down enemies with brutal efficiency? The choice is yours, and the game does a great job of making every choice feel meaningful. And man, the world building is top tier. The game is set in the near future, where cybernetic augmentation is becoming mainstream, but not without controversy. Some people see it as the next step in human evolution, while others think it's a dangerous step toward inequality and corporate control. The cities you explore like Detroit and Hengsha feel alive with detail, and you'll find newspapers, emails, and conversations that give you insight into the social and political tensions brewing beneath the surface. It's not just window dressing it pulls you deeper into the story and makes the world feel believable. The story itself is packed with intrigue. As Jensen, you're trying to figure out who attacked your company and why, but as you dig deeper, you uncover layers of conspiracies that tie into global events. There are no simple villains here, everyone you meet has their own motivations, and the game forces you to make tough decisions that have real consequences. The dialogue system is fantastic too, you can talk your way out of confrontations, but only if you pick the right responses based on what you've learned about the person you're speaking to. And the game's vibe, it's got that perfect cyberpunk aesthetic, lots of black and gold gold, neon signs, rain-soaked streets, and high-tech gadgets everywhere. The soundtrack is moody and atmospheric, giving every moment this sense of tension, whether you're sneaking through a corporate facility or just exploring the streets. LA Noire Man, L.A. Noir is one of those games that pulls you in before you even realize what's happening. You play as Cole Phelps, a World War II veteran turned detective, working your way through the ranks of the LAPD in 1947 Los Angeles. But it's not just another open world crime game, it's all about piecing together clues, interrogating suspects, and solving cases. Think of it like a detective drama where every little detail matters, and yeah, it can be slow at times, but that's part of what makes it so damn immersive. The first thing that'll hook 
thank you is the vibe. The game nails that post-war, noir atmosphere, the jazz music, the trench coats, the cigarette smoke, and the way the sun sets over Lay's grimy streets. It's like stepping into an old-school detective movie. Every corner of the city feels alive, whether it's the busy streets, shady bars, or crime scenes you stumble upon. It's not just the setting, it's the little things. You'll drive through neighborhoods with 1940s radio tunes playing in the background, and it feels real in a way most games don't capture. The cases are what really draw you in. You'll start small handling things like petty thefts and hit and runs, but before long, you're thrown into murder investigations and tangled conspiracies. Each case plays out like an episode of a detective show you visit crime scenes, gather evidence, question witnesses, and try to figure out what the hell really happened. The interrogations. Those are the heart of the game. You'll sit across from suspects, watch their facial expressions closely, and decide if they're telling the truth or hiding something, and man, the motion capture is crazy good you can see every little twitch and nervous glance and it makes you feel like a real detective trying to read people. Give me something, Velasco, or I'll take you back to the cells and tell the whole station you're a child molester. How long do you think you'll last? Okay, okay, I hear you. But here's the thing you're gonna screw up. Sometimes you'll think you've nailed someone in a lie, only for the game to say, nope, ROM call, and when you get it ROM, it hurts like you just let a criminal walk free. But that's what makes it so engaging. It's not about always being right, it's about learning from your mistakes and getting better at reading people and piecing things together. It gives the whole game this trial and error, feeling that's frustrating in the best way. The story gets surprisingly deep too. Phelps isn't just a cookie cutter hero, he's complicated, and as you progress, you start peeling back layers of his past. The more you climb the ranks, the messier things get. The game isn't afraid to dive into some dark themes from police corruption to post-war trauma, and as much as you're trying to do good, it becomes pretty clear that not everything is as black and white as it seems. And yeah, the open world isn't as packed with stuff to do as other games, but honestly, that's not the point. It's more about the experience driving to crime scenes, chatting with your partner, and soaking in that noir atmosphere. Uh, the pacing is slow, but it works. It gives you time to think, to put pieces together, and really get into the mindset of a detective. Immortals Phoenix Rising. Immortals Phoenix Rising is like that surprise game you didn't expect to enjoy as much as you do. It's bright, funny, and packed with fun exploration that scratches that open world itch without overwhelming you. You play as Phoenix, a mortal suddenly caught in a god-sized mess involving Greek gods, legendary creatures, and way too much Zeus banter. Right from the start, it's clear this game isn't taking itself too seriously, and that's what makes it so refreshing. The gameplay feels smooth and easy to get into. Think Breath of the Wild but with a bit more flair, there's climbing, gliding, puzzle solving, and lots of combat. The puzzles, especially in the vaults of Tartaros, are surprisingly satisfying plus the world is full of stuff to do hidden treasures, epic fights, and mythological creatures waiting to get smacked around. The combat is fast and fun with a mix of sword strikes, bow shots, and special god powers. Whether you're flinging enemies into the air with Ares' wrath or hurling giant boulders at Cy Clubs, it always feels good. It's not the deepest combat system ever, but it keeps things light and engaging throughout. If you're looking for an open world game that's not a time sink but still offers great exploration, solid puzzles, and entertaining combat, Immortals Phoenix Rising is definitely worth checking out. It's not trying to reinvent the wheel, but damn, it's a good time. The Wolf Among Us the Wolf Among Us grabs you right from the opening scene and doesn't let go. It's a gritty, noir-style mystery set in a world where fairy tale characters like Snow White and the Big Bad Wolf are living hidden lives in New York City. You play as Bigby Wolf, the sheriff of Fable Town, trying to keep order while investigating a brutal murder that's way more complicated than it seems. The story hooks you fast. It's dark 
filled with twists, and every character you meet feels layered like they've all got something to hide. You'll be making tough dialogue choices constantly, and the game doesn't waste time that lets you know early on that your decisions have weight. Say the wrong thing, punch the wrong person, or trust the wrong character, and things spiral. But that's half the fun figuring out what kind of Bigby you want to be a ruthless enforcer or a reluctant protector. The atmosphere is incredible. Fable Town is this seedy, rundown part of the city, drenched in neon lights and cigarettes, with characters struggling to survive. It's the perfect setting for a murder mystery, and the comic book art style makes it feel unique and alive. The soundtrack, moody and atmospheric, sets the tone perfectly for late night investigations and shady bar confrontations. The gameplay is light, it's mostly dialogue, quick time events, and exploration, but it works because the focus is on storytelling. Every choice, every interaction, makes you feel like you're shaping the narrative, and it's hard not to get wrapped up in the drama. And trust me, the cliffhangers will have you binging through the episodes like a TV series you just can't stop watching. If you're into narrative-driven games with strong characters and a good mystery, The Wolf Among Us is an easy game to get obsessed with. It's gripping, emotional, and full of those oh shit moments that'll keep you thinking long after the credits roll. Shadow of Mordor. Shadow of Mordor hooks you fast. You play as Talion, a ranger fused with the spirit of an ancient elf lord out for revenge against Sauron's forces in the gritty, brutal world of Middle-earth. Right from the start, the game makes it clear this isn't some slow build-up. It throws you into combat with orcs, gives you cool supernatural abilities, and sets you loose in an open world full of enemies waiting to get sliced apart. What really gets you obsessed is the nemesis system. Every orc captain you encounter has a unique personality strengths and weaknesses and if one kills you they rise in power and remember you the next time you meet. It's personal and it's brilliant. The system makes every fight feel like it matters. That one orc who somehow got lucky and killed you. Yeah, he'll taunt you the next time you see him and beating him down will feel so good. Or maybe he escapes, ranks up again, and becomes your worst nightmare. The dynamic between you and these enemies makes every encounter exciting. Combat is fast and brutal like a mix between Batman Arkham and Assassin's Creed. You'll counter, slash, and execute enemies with style. But it's not just about combat you'll sneak through camps, dominate orcs to fight for you, and unlock new abilities that make you feel like a force of nature. It's the perfect balance between stealth strategy and pure chaos. The world itself isn't massive, but it's packed with things to do. Whether it's freeing slaves, hunting captains, or chasing down collectibles, there's always something that pulls you into the next objective. It nails that open world flow where you tell yourself, I'll just do this one thing, and suddenly hours have gone by. Metro Exodus. Metro Exodus pulls you in with its eerie atmosphere and never lets go. This time, the series moves beyond the claustrophobic tunnels of the Moscow Metro and drops you into the vast, ruined landscapes of post-apocalyptic Russia. You're still playing as Artyom, the quiet but determined survivor, but now you're leaving the underground behind, boarding a train called the Aurora, and setting off on a journey across the wasteland in search of a new life. The open environments are a huge shift from the tight corridors of previous Metro games, but the game still manages to keep that signature tension. Each region feels alive in its own terrifying way frozen rivers, decaying factories, and eerie swamps all filled with mutants, bandits, and environmental hazards. The world is beautiful in a bleak kind of way, and just wandering through it, scavenging for supplies while listening to the wind howl, gives you chills. The gameplay is a mix of survival and action. Every bullet counts, and your equipment is constantly on the verge of breaking down you'll need to craft filters for your gas mask, clean your weapons to keep them functional, and make tough decisions about when to fight and when to sneak. It's not just about shooting, it's about surviving. Running out of supplies in the middle of nowhere isn't just a setback, it's terrifying. 
What really makes Exodus special is how it balances those big open spaces with personal story-driven moments. The Aurora isn't just a train, it's your home. You'll spend time with the crew between missions, sharing stories, learning about their struggles, and seeing their relationships evolve over the course of the journey. These quiet moments hit hard they remind you that even in a world gone to hell, there's still hope in human connection. The game gives you a lot of freedom in how you approach things. Some sections let you go in guns blazing, but stealth often feels like the smarter choice. Your decisions matter. Two, whether it's how you handle enemies, or the way you treat your companions, your choices shape the outcome of the story, it makes you feel like every action carries weight, and by the end, you'll be thinking about the consequences of what you did along the way. If you're into immersive, story-rich games that mix open exploration with tight, survival-based mechanics, Metro Exodus will keep you hooked. It's not just about escaping the horrors of the Metro, it's about finding something worth living for. And once you're on that train with Artyom and his crew, you won't want to get off until the very end. Batman Arkham Asylum Batman Arkham Asylum grabs you the second you step through those gates. It's dark, atmospheric, and instantly makes you feel like the Dark Knight himself. This isn't just some superhero beat em up. It's a perfectly crafted experience that mixes stealth, exploration, and brutal combat, all wrapped in a story that pulls you deeper and deeper into Gotham's darkest corners. The setup is simple, the Joker has taken over Arkham Asylum, and every villain you can think of from Harley Quinn to Killer Croc is waiting to make your life hell. But instead of just throwing you into non-stop action, the game makes you think. You've got to outsmart enemies, use detective skills, and carefully plan your moves. Whether you're sneaking through vents, setting traps, or side silently taking out thugs one by one, the gameplay makes you feel like Batman. The combat system is smooth and satisfying, it's all about timing countering punches, dodging attacks, and unleashing a flow of perfectly executed combos. It looks simple at first, but as more enemies show up with weapons and shields, the challenge ramps up, and man, pulling off a chain of takedowns without getting hit feels so damn good. Arkham Asylum itself is practically a character in the game. The place is dripping with atmosphere creepy hallways, eerie patient cells, and unsettling audio logs scattered throughout. It's not just a backdrop exploring the asylum reveals hidden lore and secrets about Gotham's rogues, giving you that I need to find everything feeling. The Metroidvania style layout means you'll revisit areas with new gadgets, slowly unlocking every part of the asylum until it feels like you own the place. Greedfall. Greedfall is one of those RPGs that feels like a hidden gem. It doesn't have the flash of a massive AAA game, but once you get into it, it hooks you with its world story and the freedom to shape your journey. You play as Desarde, a noble diplomat sent to a mysterious island to broker peace between colonists, native tribes, and rival factions, while also searching for a cure for a plague threatening your homeland. It's part political drama, part fantasy adventure, and the mix works surprisingly well. The combat and exploration feel familiar but solid, you've got swords, guns, magic pick your playstyle and tweak it however you like, there's a bit of everything here from melee brawls to casting spells, and even muskets for ranged combat. It's not the deepest system, but it's satisfying enough, especially when you upgrade your gear and abilities. Plus, the enemy variety keeps things interesting. You'll face everything from angry locals to massive mystical creatures lurking in the wilds. What really pulls you in though is the story and world building. The island of Tirfredi feels alive with factions, each with their own agendas and complex relationships. Your choices matter, how you approach diplomacy, who you ally with, and how you handle delicate situations all shape the story. It's not just about who you fight, it's about who you help, betray, or keep in your corner. And that makes every dialogue feel meaningful. The companions are another highlight. You'll recruit a mix of characters, each with their own personalities, backstories, and loyalties. They'll comment on your actions, argue with each other, and their loyalty can shift depending on how you treat them and what alliances you make. It's not just about throwing them into battle, they become part of your story story, and getting to know them adds depth to the journey. If you're into RPGs where your choices shape the story, Greedfall will scratch
scratch that itch. It's not trying to reinvent the wheel, but it's a solid character-driven adventure with enough freedom and depth to keep you hooked. I think of it like a mix between Dragon Age and The Witcher with a bit of colonial intrigue thrown in for good measure. It might not be perfect, but it's one of those games that sticks with you and if you give it a chance, you'll find yourself pretty damn invested. Well, everyone, that was all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, please make sure to leave a like and also tell me what more games you would add to this list. Now, I will see you later. Have a good day ahead.